The insects truly are the marmite of the animal kingdom. For some, they're sources of worry and fear and disgust, and for others, they're sources of inspiration and wonder. But no matter how you feel about them, the fate of humans and insects are closely intertwined. Yet we're losing them at alarming rates. Failure to protect the insects will impact the lives of our family members that aren't even born yet. But how, and why should you care? Ever since being a child, I've been amazed by animals. The insects are my first love, and it all started around the same time I became a mustard-wearing fashion icon. I used to go around with my yellow bucket, collecting insects and watching them develop. This appreciation quickly turned into love for these small creatures which nobody else seemed to care about. My first act of conservation was asking my mum to move worms off a path with sticks, just so nobody would stand on them. This has led me to where I am today now as a zoologist Concerned with insects and other invertebrates, how people perceive them, and what we can do to conserve them. Though my story is not so unique. As children, most of us love insects. They come in so many different shapes and sizes and colours, and they do such a wide range of things, it's hard to not like at least some of them. But as we grow up, our perception of them changes to sources of fear, household invaders, or garden pests. Though I believe, as adults, we can rekindle this appreciation. And it begins with understanding the insects and recognising their importance to almost every single land-based organism in some way, shape or form. But what makes them so important? Plants are the foundations of many ecosystems. They provide us and other animals sources of food, medicine and shelter. There are lots of plants which rely on a variety of insects to survive and reproduce. More than 85% of the world's flowering plants require insect pollination to reproduce. That means lots of nuts, vegetables and fruit for us to eat. Some plants require insects to move their seed around, helping them move out to new places. Insects and other invertebrate predators help balance populations of herbivores which would do lots of damage if left unchecked. Balanced populations of herbivores can even benefit plants by increasing their photosynthesis productivity. When herbivore poo falls to the ground, it's taken care of by nature's bin men. These make sure that the nutrients taken by the plant are recycled back into the earth where it will provide food for other plants. They may not have the most glamorous job in the world, but just think about how smelly the world would be without them. The insects are also a really important food source for animals such as birds, amphibians and mammals. Despite their importance to us and plants, a whopping 41% of insects are threatened with extinction. What do you think will happen when they disappear? If the insects were to disappear entirely, we would lose these vital services and see a domino effect in which other organisms might not be able to survive or reproduce. This is what we would call a loss of biodiversity. It simply means that there would be fewer habitats and species. It might surprise you to know that biodiversity is incredibly important for our well-being. A continued reduction of biodiversity would mean for us lower water quality, more extreme weather such as floods, wildfires, fewer medicines. It would cause a faster changing climate, which would then further reduce biodiversity, which would then further change the climate. And lastly, our food is at risk. And who doesn't love food? And around three quarters of our crops are pollinated by insects. This service is worth around 420 billion pound per year globally. The human population is around 8 billion, and it's predicted to be around 9 billion by the year 2050. If the human population is the biggest it's ever been, and our insect populations are smaller than ever, and we need them to grow food, what do you think is going to happen when we can't grow enough food? We're currently heading into the next mass extinction event called the Holocene. The last mass extinction event happened around the end of the Cretaceous period, where around 80% of all organisms became extinct. A 2020 United Nations report suggests that over a million species could become extinct over the next few decades. This is not the future we want to hand over to our grandchildren. So why are our insects declining? One of the main reasons for declines of insects in Britain is loss of habitat through deforestation, agriculture and urbanisation. Britain has lost around 50% of its ancient woodland and around 98% of its wildflower meadows, which is a real shame. This leads to less food and shelter for insects to survive. Chemical, light and sound pollution, poison and confuse insects. Fertilisers have made the soil far too nutrient rich for many of our native species, which just simply cannot cope in these conditions. 
our use of pesticides have doubled in the last 25 years. Introduced species, parasites, pathogens, and we've seen what COVID-19 has done to us this last year. Atmospheric carbon dioxide levels are the highest they've been in around 3 million years. This has led to unprecedented fires, floods and droughts across all continents and has messed with the synchronised timings of many plants and animals. And before you say climate change is a natural process, it's only a half truth. It is a natural process, but it's being sped up so fast by our activities that organisms simply cannot adapt to it. Don't just take my word for it though. Let's hear what one of Britain's veteran entomologists has to say. I'm Kareem Varhead and I'm Professor of Entomology at the University of Derby, where I also lead the Masters in Conservation Biology. I've been studying insects professionally for 30 years, but even as a very small child, I used to spend hours watching ants in the back garden. So really, I've had a lifelong interest in insects. I think during that time, I've seen a decline in insect diversity and abundance. I recall as a very small child going on motorway journeys and the windscreen of the car being absolutely covered in squashed insects. Now, for some reason, that's not something we see very often nowadays. But beyond anecdotal evidence, there's good scientific evidence for the decline of various insect groups, whether it's butterflies, moths, solitary bees, or just general insect biomass. We've seen a year-on-year -year decline over the last 30 years across Europe. If everyone could do just one thing to make the world a better place for insects, I think it would be to plant more wild flowers so that there's a continuity of nectar and pollen sources right from early spring to late autumn. That's just the tip of the iceberg though. There's so much more that needs to be done to help insects, not least of which is regulating or banning the use of pesticides. Luckily, if you want to help our insects, there's lots of small gestures you can make that are often quite fun and cost absolutely nothing to do. Firstly, we can change our attitudes towards insects. We can respect their importance and understand what they do for us. If you're a fan of Pokemon Go and you like going out and looking for things, I definitely recommend giving iRecord a go. iRecord is a free app which contributes to national databases. When you go out and you find an insect or any other animal, you can take a picture of it and upload a location. Each record you submit helps us understand better what is going on with our wildlife. And absolutely everything is worth recording, even the most common species. Each of our gardens could help counter habitat loss. Be gone with boring lawns, square hedges and sterile garden centre plants. We can start planting beautiful native wildflowers and let that grass grow. Where possible, let fallen leaves linger. These serve as a vital nursery ground for insects such as butterflies, which hibernate over the winter. If we're too tidy in our gardens, we might accidentally throw them away in the trash, which would be a right shame. We simply don't have to be so tidy in our gardens. And what better reason to be lazy than to secure food for future generations of people and save our insects. We should reframe the way that we see certain British plants, such as nettles and dandelions, which are beautiful in their own right. We can easily stop using pesticides and herbicides in the garden for cosmetic reasons. If you want to learn more about wildlife friendly gardening, there are lots of helpful Facebook groups. Here are a few of my favourites. These communities are really friendly places and you'll learn lots. Get involved. Volunteer for insect conservation organisations such as Bug Life, Bumblebee Conservation Trust and Butterfly Conservation. And finally, vote in for governments that understand how important biodiversity is for us and our children. So what are governments around the world doing to make the world a better place for insects to live? Sweden has pledged over 25 million to help pollinators over the next three years. And Costa Rica are undertaking the massive task of DNA barcoding every single species within the next decade. Germany are going to spend more than $118 million on pollinator conservation, research and monitoring. In the USA, spending millions on improving pollinator habitats and research. That's awesome, but what about Britain? 
Ambitious projects such as Bug Life Bee Lines aim to restore a whopping 150,000 hectares of pollinator friendly habitat, creating corridors across the country. In 2020, more than 111,000 Brits took part in the Big Butterfly Camps, and Bumblebee Conservation's Bee Walk has generated more than 150,000 records. Insect social media groups are growing rapidly. That means more people like you are starting to see the light. Yay! The state of insects is really quite bittersweet. We've seen unprecedented losses of these incredibly vital, beautiful animals. But the good news is we still have time to fix it. We have approximately one generation of people to fix it before it's too late. And that's people like you and me. It's said that a society grows great when old people plant trees in whose shade they will never sit. We owe it to younger generations to leave a legacy behind that allows them to flourish. So after watching this video, if you're still not a fan of insects, that's okay. But please consider their importance, not just for us, but for generations of people yet to come. And please take a moment to think, how would you rather be remembered? As part of a generation that ignored reason and pillaged the earth, or as part of a generation of pioneers who acted upon science, reason and compassion.